And I have stopping with Marcus J. Thank you so much for those folks who have been listening to us. What up, said? I see you out there. Appreciate it. And yes, the Spurs are boring. Uh, ain't nothing that you can do about it. They boring as hell. And thank you, uh, SY, for always having my back. Reminding me of the name of the tennis player whose name I could remember. Maria Sharapova. That's who we were talking about. Maria Sharapova. I remember and a corner cola. She used, was the Russian girl who used to play. Wasn't she the model? Uh, she was the model one that used to play a few years ago, but she ain't been on the tour. She's too busy making movies and modeling uh, back in her native uh, Soviet Union. Uh, or Russia, I'm sorry. We're not supposed to say Soviet Union anymore. Anyway, ain't no house stabbing Marcus. Jay, we'll go ahead and introduce joining me in the studio. I got your main man, Carlton Banks. What's going on, my brother? Yeah, what's going on, man? I'm a little depressed, man. You're a little depressed? I'm a little depressed. All right, well, hopefully uh, we can have a little fun for the next yeah, hour and a half that. and yeah. kind of alleviate some of your depression. You want to share with the listeners really, really quickly why you're depressed? I ain't get to see my kids, man. My season over. My soccer season over. Yeah, we know that Carl Banks is the, uh, the, soccer, the soccer coach, and we know it's a big part of his life, and we feel bad for him that he didn't get an <laughs> opportunity to spend it with his kids today. And uh uh, Miss Tony's going to go ahead and give him some tissue. Miss Tony, what's up, girl? Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. You know, it's very Monday. And I tell you, when you get up on Monday and it's boring as hell all day, you got to work and you didn't feel like it. You got back after having a, you know, a nice weekend and then you get to turn on the Mix LR and you get to turn on Shoutcast and Winamp and Loud C and LegacyInternetRadio.com and listen to you. Ain't No High Stepping with Marcus J. So hopefully... We can bring a little bit of joy to you as we go through the stories that we got for you guys in the next couple of, uh, well, not a couple of hours, but at least the next hour and a half or so. So, appreciate it. Uh, Ain't No Has Double Marcus J is live from the den. The flagship show, LegacyInternetRadio.com, as I mentioned to you before, Mix LR, Shoutcast, Winamp, and Loud City. I uh, want to go and jump into the segment that we like to call What the Hell. If you want to be down with anything, hit us up on our uh, Ain't No Has Stab with Marcus J fan page. Hit us up on our personal pages. Uh, if you know us personally, send us a text. We'll try to get to them or call us up, which is what we prefer you do. Call us up by phone. The number is 804-402-2893. Once again, 804-402-2893 to get in on a discussion. If you hear something uh, that you want to get in on, feel free to call us up uh, and we'll put you on the live line. We don't screen calls. So whatever you got to say, as long as you ain't cussing, only I get to cuss as a host. Ain't no ass that with Marcus J. The first thing I want to get into, Carlton Banks. <sighs> Carlton Banks, we try not to talk about football this time of year just because, you know, it's not something that, you know, it's sad. It's really, really sad for us to, you know, talk about something that we really can't enjoy. But what I'm going to bring up is not really a football story. It involves a football player. I'm going to come to you on it first, and then I'm going to get Miss Tony's uh, opinion on it. But Chad Johnson, and I'm not going to call him 85. I'm just not doing that. Why not, man? He should legally change his whatever. name, right? Whatever, whatever. When Prince changed his name to Symbol, we still called him Prince. Okay? No, we called him the artist formerly known as. You did. I called him Prince. Anyway. Did he answer? If mama named Clay, I'm going to call him Clay, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I got him. He can't say nothing to that. But anyway, Chad, Chad Johnson, Chad o- Ocho Singer. We know that he was in court today to address the domestic violence uh, charges that he had had against his uh, soon-to-be ex-wife, Evelyn Lazada. And apparently his attorney and the court had a prearranged a prearrangement set up so that he would not have to serve any jail time. He would do whatever the other punishment, which I'm unaware of what that is because I didn't pay attention to this story until I heard what happened in court today. What happens in court is the judge, and I'm sorry, her Last name is escaping me, but I think the fact that it's a female judge is relevant. I do remember that her first name is Kathleen. That's how I know it's a woman. She was uh, congratulating Chad Johnson's attorney for the way he, he was. was handled. Uh, it was a female judge. Let me set this up, bro. My bad, my bad. It's a female judge who was con- uh, congratulating Chad Johnson's attorney on the way he had handled the case. Mm-hmm. And Chad Johnson, hearing this, becoming excited, proceeded to pat his attorney on the ass as if to say good job. Uh, The judge at this time, again, a female judge who is presiding over a case that involved male against female domestic violence, uh, saw fit to, I I, I don't know if she charged him with contempt or whatever it was she did, but she sent his ass to jail for 30 days. So Carlton Banks, 
Why don't you give me your thoughts on that, my brother? I look at it like this. I know from playing football and seeing some other sports, a pat on the back is not homophobic or something bad. It's a congratulatory method. They do it in every line. They do it in a lot of good. They do it in a lot of things. Okay, not just sports. Let me just say to be correct about the situation. This lady just. I guess she was mad. I mean, did he insult her? I mean, he didn't say anything. He just gave a gesture. Of, Good job to his to his toy. I mean, really? Come on now. I mean, I look at it like this. If you gave me a pound, should Tony get upset because you gave me a pound and you didn't give her a pound? I mean, what? He couldn't reach up there and touch her butt. It was it was all in, it was all in a gesture of good job. Tony, what's your thoughts? I mean, it basically comes down to that's inappropriate to be in a court of law. You don't do something like that. I never really understood why guys hit each other on the butt. I don't know why you can't just give them a high five. But, I mean, to me, again, as a judge, if she feels that's inappropriate for her courtroom, then she can find him in contempt of court. So, My thought is this. Um, it was inappropriate. You need to understand when it's time to be serious mm-hmm. and when it's time to not be be playing and you don't go into court you need to pay attention to your surroundings and you know i don't want to come off as sexist but i'm gonna come off as realistic you see that you have a female judge who's presiding over your case for you headbutting your wife okay so not that a male judge would give you any more uh any more leniency Mm -hmm. but you got to consider that if there's going to be any lack of leniency you're going to get it from the female judge so you need to go in there understanding that there's a level of seriousness that you need to carry and a big ass grin on your face. And that's my words. I don't know if he was grinning or not, but I don't I don't think I've ever seen a guy pat another guy on the ass and not be grinning. So, to, to you know, so to, to so to pat him on the butt just tells me that you don't understand how serious this is. Like you go into court and you like, yeah, I got this. You know right. what I mean? I'm, I'm a walk out of free man. I got this. Like, no, nah, this is a serious offense. And people go to jail for beating up other people, not just your wife or your boyfriend. You know what I mean? Or you, whatever your domestic relationship is. People go to jail for beating up people. And for you to go in there and think that you're above the law, yeah, I got a problem with that. And the fact that he didn't realize that that might not have been something that he should have been doing speaks to, to me, it speaks to how clueless he is to his surroundings. Now, do I think 30 j- days in jail is excessive? Yeah, I do. If we're speaking only to that incident, mm-hmm. do I see letting him go and sleep over for a night? Yeah, I can see giving him a night. 30 days to me is excessive, but I think that he needed to be shown that this is serious business. Absolutely. And so, you know, a lot of times people like that, you find them, finding them don't matter. You're going to hold them contempt and take their money. That don't matter. They got so much money, they, they piss money. Yeah. So it's like, whatever. But if you take away their freedom or you take away their ability to be able to perform their job in, in this sense as a football player, then I think that's that's different. Now, Jay Grizzly of the Green Room version 2.0 is hitting us up. Uh, he's reminding us that Tim Tebow signed with the Patriots. I don't care about that. We ain't talking about that. Uh, but Carlton and I did mention it earlier, and we decided we are not going to talk about that. We'll save that for another time. But since it came up, I'll go ahead and put it out there. But uh, I'm going to clean up what you said, Grizz. I know this ain't what you said, <laughs> but if you listen to Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J or the Green Room version 2.0, you know sometimes we have to kind of clean up certain things. And basically what he's saying is Chad Johnson just got uh, reprimanded in court uh, for spanking his lawyer. And again, I did clean that up. I pulled a few of his words out. but uh, And I think he's, I, I think he's <laughs> I saying that kind of in a joking way, kind of tongue-in-cheek, but... Uh, Carl Banks, take the last word on this before we move on. You know, Tony, you hit on something that was said that it is a courtroom and, you know, he needs to act like that and that outburst was uncalled for. But you've seen other cases or you've probably heard of other cases where people have made different types of outbursts that could have been considered the same thing. And they were not on ch- trial for the, the, the uh, I can't think of it, the, whatever they were committed a crime, uh, of the crime. I can't think right now. But there have been outbursts in court that this really should not have been, in my opinion, um, giving him any time. The dude was just saying, good job, lawyer. I mean, sh- that's a, would a pat on the back have been any different? I, you know, again, I, I, I don't need to debate it. I, I spoke my piece yeah, on it. I mean, um, you know, I, I feel strongly about it. It's one of those things where I'm okay with agreeing to disagree. Some situations, you know, warrant debate. You know, you know, Chad Johnson is not someone who I really want to take a lot of time debating. 
Uh, I understand where you're coming from because I don't think that he should have gotten 30 days. I I think that was excessive and unfair, but I think that he needed to be shown that this is serious business, and if that judge felt that's the way to do it, then so be it. Ain't no no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio.com. We're moving on. What the hell? This first what the hell story, well, second rather, what the hell story is one that when I saw it come out last week, I really did say what the hell. Some people might want to take this out of context. I'm not sure that I'm taking it out of context. Beyonce is charging fans $25,000 to work for her for free. What do we mean by that? Basically, she is auctioning off this opportunity through her company called CharityBuzz.com. Uh, and we can say the money's not going into her pockets instead of going to charity, but the package does include a meet and greet with her, VIP, uh, two VIP tickets to her L.A. concert show, a chance to spend the day working with her mother, Tina, in the wardrobe department, uh, and also, of course, uh, a Mrs. Carter show world tour gift bag. And that's according to the Huffington Post, and I'm getting this from NaturallyMoi.com. Um, I just think it's in poor taste, and I'm going to go first on this one. I think it's in poor taste, even if 100% of the proceeds go to charity. I think when you put it out there by saying 25K to work for Beyonce for free, Tony, I just think that's in poor taste. And I think that there should have been or could have been a different way to market this opportunity to give to charity. What's your thoughts when you hear it set up? You know, um, I'm not a Beyonce fan i will say i like some of her music but i'm not you know you find those people who just worship her like she is like a goddess um and i but i do find the people that are like real diehard beyonce fans like they would probably sell their souls if they could just have like a two minute like even to just touch her um i just i think that people her and I guess that's what they're paid to do and that's why she's so successful is they monopolize on you know the fact that she's Beyonce I mean I don't I I wouldn't do it if I had twenty five thousand dollars to throw away I wouldn't do it you lead me to the next point the auction so far has received 10 bids called with the highest bid being 11 5 11,500 uh so obviously there's some fans that are willing to pay good money to hang out with beyonce yeah. and her mom but not quite the 25k that you're looking for a couple of the real quick t- tweets and then i'll get Carlton banks's opinion one disgusting beyonce is rich she should just make the twenty five thousand dollar donation herself rather than asking her fans to do it uh that's one person another person says does beyonce think that she's that important that people will pay 25k to work for her for free that is theft in my opinion not worth it and then lastly another person says so let me get this straight you have to pay beyonce 25k to work for her for free get over yourself her ego is out of control call banks uh with the setup that i've given and the opinion that tony and the tweeters have given what's your thoughts bro what do you hear, think about when you have these auctions for single bachelors or bachelorettes it's the same damn thing only thing is you're not getting any you know Goops or gobs or whatever, you know, it could be man or woman who's making the bid. It's the same thing. Fraternities have done it. Organizations have done it. What's the difference of Beyonce doing the same thing? She's actually using herself as a person to gain money for an organization that, yes, she's probably donated to, but she's also using her influence to get more money to that cause. Are you taking that away from her? just raise money i mean she has a lot of money and like one of the tweeters said you know you you likened it to you know those you auction and you get a date with somebody that's different you know you might possibly get a relationship and end up finding the love of your life and and going off and get married for them with married to that person it's Beyonce and I agree yeah she her ego is ridiculous you have money that you can give to charity and it's you would write it off and you know it's tax deductible anyway so again it's just her whole you know I'm Beyonce and I'm so fantastic and everybody should anybody would want to do anything just to be around me I think it's ridiculous and quite honestly I will add if somebody gave me tickets to a Beyonce concert I would not attend is it tax deductible for her or tax deductible for the person who's making the auction? Anything that she gives, anything that anybody donates to charity is tax tax deductible. Okay, well, she could be having, she could have a, um, a whatever it is to give the money to. The point is, other people have done the same thing. They've been doing it for years. Why not use my notoriety, my my fame to draw do the same thing? And 
probably get more money. Like yeah. you said, you had what ten bids already, right? We're getting ten, yeah. And the most being uh, a little less than half of what they're asking for. Uh, one of the listeners, Mary in Richmond, is saying if someone pays the person uh, is donating, the person gets to spend time with Beyonce. She's not only making money, but she's getting a crazy amount of coverage, not for herself, but for her cause. And that's a different way to look at it. Um, Tony, do you think the fact that she is making uh, the whatever her, I guess, charity? Uh, kind of putting them on the forefront and, and, and giving them the opportunity to get their name out there. Does that change anything to you? Or do you just think that it's not cool for her to ask her fans to pay $25,000 with the premise of hanging out with her and that money going to charity? Absolutely not, because I don't even remember the name of the charity. I mean, that should be at the forefront, you know, in an effort to raise money for this charity. This is what we're doing. To me, it's just about Beyonce. And oh, yeah, by the way, that money will go to charity. Marion, uh, Marion uh, Richmond agrees with you, Carlton Banks, by the way. I just I, I agree somewhat with both of you. And I hadn't taken uh Carlton Banks' position, or I hadn't thought about Carlton Banks' position until he actually said it with regards to how you have other organizations who do similar things with regards to things like The Bachelor and, and all of that kind of thing. But my initial thought is the same that you had, Tony, which I'm going to hold back, I'm going to come back to. It just kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you have a high rate, and it's not really for me, it's not even about Beyonce. You know, if Jay-Z had done this or if Michelle Obama had done this or if Bono had done this or if Miley Cyrus had done this or, mm-hmm. if, you know, if Michael Douglas. I mean, pick, you know, fill in your, you know, if George Bush had done this, you know, fill in your celebrity, you know. And if you preface it by saying, hang out with me for twenty five dollars, twenty twenty five thousand dollars and basically be my 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 servant or my person that works for me for twenty five K. You know, I, I just think that that's not worded all that good. And if you figure out a way, hey, look, I'm no PR person. Leave it to somebody else to figure out the right way to word it. But I am a consumer and I am somebody who sees that. And I am someone who had a very visceral rea- reaction to it when I initially saw it. I didn't react very good the first time called it. Once again, I'm going to give you the last word on it because Tony and I do agree and you disagree. So I'll give you the last word before we move on. I thought you said Carla. Carlton. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, again, I, I really feel strongly that she's doing it for a good cause. She's using her name. She's putting it out there that, hey, you can hang out with me. And your money's going to go to charity. Your money is going to a good cause. It's not going in my pocket. Some people may say it is. But at the end of the day, somebody's getting a benefit that they didn't have before. Plain and simple. Okay. I can dig it. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. We don't always have to agree uh with each other we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable and oftentimes that's pretty much what Carlton Banks and I uh end up doing um which is fine it's in good fun uh and I think a good fair debate uh can certainly lead to a good positive relationship uh between a couple of brothers that have been brothers for a long time you know how Stephen Marcus said the last quote that I'm getting uh from Mary here from Richmond she's saying that she's getting 25k and the person gets to spend time with her does anyone care about the 25k dinners with politicians exactly. uh, which you know again is a very fair point and that goes in their pocket that's, that's a very that's a very fair point you know i step in marcus j moving on uh to a little bit more serious stuff i want to talk about is philadelphia and there's two cases that came out of philadelphia the first one i want to hit really really quick so just give me your opinions on this one quick, and then we're going to go to another one in Philadelphia. But last week, we had the building collapse where the crane operator was found to have been, uh, first of all, he had a whole bunch of arrests and misdemeanors and all that kind of on his uh, on his record. But he also was found to be, uh, I don't know if he was high at the time, but he certainly had marijuana and cocaine in his system at the time that he was tested, which was in the immediate fallout after the crane had crashed and I believe there were scores that were injured and at least six that were that were killed Tony um, so I'll come to you on this one first um, you know I don't think that any of us are naive to the fact that some folks smoke a little weed you know but you can't smoke a little weed and go to work it's just, it's just and then we didn't even talk about the cocaine he had in the system you know and that's the one thing but what about the company that hired someone that had all of these you know things in his past now 
the devil's advocate would say that everyone deserves a second chance. And apparently he was given a second chance. And stories like this will make those companies leery about giving a second chance to someone else. But, dude, you got a second chance. You went to work high. I mean, for real. And people died. I mean, come on, man. What's your thoughts on that? I'm guessing you heard the story last week in Philadelphia. Um, actually, I hadn't. Um, but I am one for random drug testing. You know, having been former military, uh, you know, it keeps people on their toes. Not saying that, you know, people just stayed clean all the time, you know, because they never knew when it would happen. But I think that, you know, drug testing should not only be required when you start a position, but I think that companies, more companies should do it, you know, just randomly because something like this could happen and it's definitely more cost effective to you know have them go to lab core once every six months or however um than to risk you know facing you know all these wrongful death claims well the problem with having a drug random drug testing like that unless that's in the job description prior to you posting then you're not going to take that job you're going to look for a job that doesn't do that if you're going to do something random drug testing you are infringing on a person's private life you're dictating what they can and cannot do outside of work and granted, if there's no policy in place saying you can't kind of work this situation in a certain way, then hey, that person's going to do it. I worked at a job where as long as you can come in, you can come to the job drunk. I mean, piss poor drunk where you and I smell the alcohol. As long as you can do the um, requirements of the job, you ain't getting well, hired. Without calling out the name of the company, the company that Carlton Banks and I used to work for, the company that we met each other at, had a, for lack of a better term, don't ask, don't tell type of policy when it came to that and they actually told us that in a meeting in a public forum as long as you don't come to work looking and acting like you're under the influence we don't really care just get the job done they basically told us that in a public setting so with that being said and this is a company that didn't you know they they did they tested for 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 drugs marijuana things of that sort but they didn't test for alcohol and they didn't care if you were on it as long as you could do the job to me I have a hard time with alcohol being legal and marijuana not being legal, and that's a conversation for another day. But the point of the matter is we know that it's an intoxicant. We know that you can be – they tell you don't drink and drive because they know if you drink and drive, you're going to kill somebody. So if you can drink and drive and kill somebody, who's to say that you won't destroy your company's reputation by saying something that you shouldn't say under the influence of alcohol? Tony, take the last word on this, and we move on to the next story. Well, I mean, to me, it depends on, you know, the parameters of your job. If you have a desk job, then that's totally different from you being high um, while you have to operate heavy equipment or machinery. So that's the different th difference there. If this company, if you're, if there's a higher risk or just a chance that someone could be hurt physically by your actions, then by all means, they should be able to test you. It's, it's just, to me, it's, it's, it depends on what industry you're in and what kind of job it is. Sad just hit us up and said that the number of prescription drug users uh, is going up. So I certainly agree with that. And people are going to use, um, depends on what they have access to and what they into. But at the end of the day, people are going to use. Ain't no how step on Marcus J. Live from the Dan and Legacy Internet Radio.com. Mix LR, Shoutcast, Winamp, Wild City. There's no reason why you can't find us if you're on your mobile phone. Uh, download Winamp. Uh, and when you get into Winamp, down, uh, go into the Shoutcast and search Legacy Internet Radio. Save it. And now you got us on mobile from your smartphone, from your tablet, any way uh, that you can get to us. We're available to you. So we appreciate the love we're getting. Call us at 804 402-2893 if you want to be part of the discussion we appreciate you guys hitting us up on the Facebook page on the MixLR page we see your comments and we appreciate it we'll try to get in as many as we can uh, Ain't No Has To with Marcus J it's the top of the hour it's 8pm as we do every single uh, show at this hour we continue on with the socially conscious and entertainment hour and that's exactly what we're doing we continue on what the hell and at the conclusion of this segment Carlton Banks is going to ask us what do you think about it and he's got one he's already shared with me and, and I know it's going to elicit a whole lot of conversations. We're looking forward to that. A um, couple more real quick what the hell's in this segment. Uh, Philadelphia, keeping with them, they plan to close 23 schools, Carlton Banks. I know. Uh, but in the process of closing 23 schools and the money that they're saving by doing that, they're going to build a $400 million prison. Uh, and Anybody that knows me knows that there's always a social implication to these types of things, uh, which I'll kind of flesh out uh, as we go through. Uh, but the point of the matter is, 
a total of 23 schools are going to be closed and roughly 10 percent of those schools that are in the city 81 percent of those schools closings are going to impact black students uh, and even though they only represent about 56 percent of the student body uh, and, and, and it's sad it's, it's, it's scary to see because again in Philadelphia you got 81 percent impacted but in stark contrast, only 4% of those affected are white kids who make up only 14% of the Philly students. And though they make up 81% of the Philadelphia students, 93% of the kids affected uh, by the school closings are low income. So basically what you're telling me is you're closing the schools in the black neighborhoods, but you're building prisons. Uh, I have a hard time understanding why I shouldn't be offended by that. Uh, Carlton Banks, I'm going to give you the first word on it. A a am I tripping by seeing a correlation between the two? Am I being overly racially ins uh, sensitive here? I hope not. However, I, I kind of like feel the same way, to be honest. One of the reasons they open prisons, states make money off of them. And the more prisons they, they can get inmates and make that dollar, that's where they're going to put that influence. Um, unfortunately, they're hurting the bottom line and almost creating a surplus of students at a different school, which is then going to hurt them because overcrowdedness. Teachers not getting enough money. If they, if the teachers have a union, they should be voting against this. I mean, the parents should be voting against this. My child has to go all the way where to go to school, unless the movement is designed to push kids to better schools. Not saying anything's wrong with the school system as a whole. However, maybe there's a better program at a school that this kid can get in that he couldn't get into at first. Unless that's going to be the case, this is a bad decision. Tony? I'm not usually a conspiracy theorist, but nobody can tell me that moves like that are not intended to, you know, just further deplete our population of young black men and just any minority, I'll say, you know, Latin, Latino males as well. The, the, the immediately what I thought of when you first mentioned the story is um, something I saw actually I think you may have sent it a few couple of months ago about a gentleman who worked in the music industry and how he was called to this like secret meeting with other people in the industry and like these government officials that they essentially had this plan to use uh, rap music and the hip hop culture to take brothers down um, and while some people might have thought that that was absolutely ludicrous, you know, you have to stop and think about things like that when you do something like close 20 something schools and then invest $400 million in prison. Um, because ultimately, even if there are alternate schools out there that may be better, not every child is going to be able to flourish in those schools if they can even attend. I, I look at it like this. I mean, anybody that knows me that knows I'm a professed conspiracy theorist. I just am um, because I refuse to be told something when I see something that shows me different and accept what I was told just because I was told it by what appeared to be a reputable per person or, or place. Uh, with that being said, we know it's a fact that we had a judge, I uh, believe he was either in Ohio or Pennsylvania. I'm not sure which one. It's something that can be looked up very easily if you just do a simple Google search who recently went to prison for selling kids to prison. He went to prison for overcharging and selling, sending kids to jail for longer than he should have been going. So basically, he went to jail for selling kids to prison. We also know that uh, a lot of the prisons are privatized. So there's a lot of corporate money that's being made. We also know that the Constitution says that slavery has been abolished, but for those people who are incarcerated which is the reason why they can send you to prison, make you do all this work for 10 cents a day. So if, and we also know, lastly, we also know that they, 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 they have uh, tests and things that they give to elementary school children to see how they will test out. And based on those testings, they are grouped in certain areas of the schools. And based on those groups, some kids are given vigorous education uh, platforms and paths and the other kids are basically just kind of shepherded through the school and those are usually the low income kids who may not have done very well and are, are, are basically thrown away because we expect them to house those prisons anyway which is modern day slavery and I know that we've got some brothers and sisters 
you know, from different racial backgrounds who may think that this is conspiracy theory. But I'm not saying nothing that you can't research yourself. Right. You can research the, the Constitution that says what, it just, what I just said to you about slavery being legal if you're a prisoner. You can research the judge who was sending kids to prison. In Pennsylvania, 28 years. You can, you can, you can research all of that kind of stuff. You know, so I'm not tripping here. And so when I see a major United States city uh, do this, my antennas are going to go up. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call foul on that because 23 schools, okay, 23 schools, mostly in the black neighborhoods, but you got money to buy or, or to open a prison. That to me is, is so ludicrous that, you know, I, I don't, I'm not even going to speak on it no more. And I asked that remark and said, the next thing I want to get into, two more stories in this section of what the hell, we're going to go about another six or seven minutes and then Carlton Banks is going to take over. Um, First of all, actually, before I do that, I'm getting another hit on the MixLR, excuse me, on the Facebook page. Uh, Mary again in Richmond is saying schools uh, need to be closed due to enrollment and the condition of the buildings. When does the argument turn from we're building prisons and tearing down schools to why the socioeconomical group go to the school that are falling down? And she's giving me questions about the slavery and she's getting riled up. I mean, if you know something that can dispute what I've said, Feel free to call us up on the phone and, and call me out on my BS uh, and, and call me on my facts or put it in the Facebook wall where we're communicating with each other. Call me on my facts. You know, in the interest of full disclosure, Mary and I know each other. We've had these conversations before. I'm, I'm happy to have them, you know, publicly. No one knows who you are other than the people in this room and they're not saying. So feel free. We can talk about it live because I'm riled up, too, when I saw this story. Uh, ain't no how stepping Marcus J. Also, uh, another story that gets me a little bit, a little bit, uh, and she's looking it up now. <laughs> Again, Mary don't play. Uh, I'm also looking at uh, the, the Internet. And the last story that I had was from thegrio.com, and so is this one. Uh, actually, this one is from yourblackworld.net. The other one was from thegrio.com. This one's from yourblackworld.net. Howard University. Anybody knows Howard, one of the most famous uh, black co uh, colleges, and they're, they're known as HBCUs, it stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Uh, Howard University is one of the most popular uh, or largest, most prestigious, fill in your adjective. Uh, but they're in financial trouble, and they may actually go out of business uh, if they don't learn a more efficient way uh, to, to manage themselves. And this is basically coming from the vice chairman of the school's board of trustees who feels the school may be digging itself into a, dig, a bigger grave. You've got a published report that came out as part of a letter in the Chronicle of Higher Education. Renee Higginbotham Brooks says that, quote, Howard will not be here in three years if we don't make some crucial decisions now. And the letter, of course, is dated back to April 24th. Uh, and there's quite a few reasons that the school is going to continue to have trouble due to some very bad financial habits and circumstances. Uh, there's more to the story. We can talk about it more. Uh, but one thing that I can point out, Dr. Boyce Watkins, who's an, a, a black scholar who has recently come out uh, and supported another HBCU president, Dr. Walter Kimbrough, uh, when he basically gave... Dr. Dre, Andre Young, yes, that, that Dr. Dre of NWA, gave him a hard time and asked why he gave $35 million to USC, the University of Southern California, instead of to an HBCU. Uh, Dr. Watts, uh, Dr. Watkins, Dr. Boyce Watkins says that everyone who cares about uh, the black community support should support an HBCU even if they didn't attend one, since these schools are a critical part of educating black students. Uh, in a uh, similar note, St. Paul's College right here in Virginia, Lawrenceville, Virginia, about 45 minutes south of us here in Richmond, Virginia, will be closing their doors. They are HBCU uh, that has been in existence for over 150 years, and they are closing their doors for good at the end of this month. So and we know that this has happened before. So. Uh, Carlton, I'll come to you first. You and I are products of HBCUs, you being Virginia State University in Petersburg, Virginia, me being Virginia Union University here in Richmond. When you hear a story like this, uh, what is your initial thoughts? Well, I've been to functions at St. Paul. St. Paul is a member of the CIAA, or they were at one point. I don't know if they still are. Um, I have seen things at St. Paul's that make me wonder how they are even in existence. They are um, a subsidiary of the Episcopal Church. 
which really surprises me that one there, along with being at HBCU, the Episcopal Church also is supporting of them, and they should have some money, but I guess it's really sad and hard to hear. Now, when you think of Howard, you think of Howard of, again, a large HBCU that, how is this possible? You're in the district, you're in the capital city, you get people coming there all the time. How do you go under like this? I mean, you have a decent football team, you're in a good conference, the MEAC conference, you should be able to do well. You should have been doing well. What is going on with the money? If I'm a student of the school and or an alumni of the school, I want to know what have you been doing with my money all this time? Because tuition isn't cheap. HBCU, um, all any college. I'm not going to just say white or black. Any college tuition is not cheap, and the monies that I'm paying should be able to sustain you, especially if your enrollment is still high. So unless the enrollment has gone down, what are they doing with the money? I would really be questioning that versus saying I'm getting ready to school, close. At governor, um, what's the board called? Board, um, board, board of trustees. Board of trustees. That's who I need to be talking to right now. If I'm an alumni of that school. Board of Trustees, what's going on with my money? Where's my money going? And believe it or not, somebody will probably step in and be like, look, y'all ain't doing right by this money. Y'all need to go and take care of this real quick. Tony, what's your thoughts on it? I am actually shocked to hear that. Um, but, you know, I, I wonder, is it, you know, is it going into staff salary? Or are they spending too much money on homecoming weekend? You know, that's that's crazy because I haven't heard anything about any sort of decline in enrollment. You know, as far as I know, there's, you know, Howard alumnus is huge. Right. Um, and I can say personally, I wanted to attend HBCU. But I didn't because they tend to give less scholarships right. from what I found in my own personal experience. Not exactly. So, you know, it's it appears that they should have the income at least to sustain. And I, I'm, that just really worries me. If, tra if if Howard is going under, you know, who's next? You know, my thought is and I think Dr. Boyce Watkins hits on it when he called on Dr. Dre, uh, called him a task for. Uh, not giving the money to uh, not giving the money to an HBCU, but giving it to USC. Uh, first of all, I will say this: you reserve the right to give money to whoever you want to give money to. So I'm not saying that you're responsible for holding on, holding up HBCUs or anybody else for that matter. Uh, but what I will say is this: uh, as Tony just alluded to, there's a lot of places. Uh, a lot of alumni, I should say, that have high uh, amounts of money. And the fact that you've got an HBCU that's about to go under. Look, I, my high school, for that matter, St. Anthony High School in Jersey City, New Jersey, has a lot of uh, alumni that has a lot of resources. So when I hear places like that about to go under, it, it, it certainly gives me pause. It makes me wonder, you know, where is the alumni uh, with regards to that, I got a caller on the live line. I want to get the caller in. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's up, it's Big Rube? How y'all living? <laughs> it's Big Rube. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Not much, man. I I got a, got a little time, so I forgot to take a listen and holler at you. Okay. Well, are you following along with us in the show? You you know what we talking about right now? Um, which HBCU are we speaking of? All right, for those listeners who are new to the show, Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. Originally was hosted by myself, Marcus J. Carlton Banks, and the man on the live line, Big Rule, uh, who's on location. Unfortunately, hasn't been with us in a while, but he's still uh, part of the backbone of the show. We're, we're definitely glad to have him with us tonight. Uh, basically, what we're talking about is the HBCU in question being Howard University. Uh, you've got the chairman, uh, the trustee, the board of trustees, who basically said that if they don't start spending their money the right way, uh, they're going to close their doors in the next three years. And we know that St. Paul College here in Virginia uh, is closing their doors at the end of this month. Uh, the point that I was just making is the fact that you've got alumni 
Uh, and not just alumni. You've got a lot of wealthy people, not just black people, but people who understand the importance of HBCUs across the country that have a whole lot of money. And you got Dr. Dre, Andre Young of NWA, who just gave $35 million to USC. I don't have a problem with him doing that, for the record. You know, Dr. Boyce Watkins does, and that's fine. That's his opinion. When you got $35 million, you want to give it away, you have the right to give it to whoever you want to give it to. And I am not one to begrudge you that you know, you know, that, you know, that act. However, there are a lot more people in this world than just Dr. Dre that got $35 million. And when I see that a lot of those people may or may not be doing that, or you see an HBCU that's struggling this way, particularly one uh, as uh, illustrious as Howard University, it does make me a little bit sad when I, when I, when I don't see them being able to dig out of the hole that they're in. What's your thoughts uh, with that setup? I mean, you know, to hear any university going uh, the negative way is always bad. But then, I mean, you know, I was listening to Tony earlier. Crazy say, I mean, what are you spending the tuition on? You know, are they spending it on the, the, the weekend parties? Or, I mean, not trying to make light of stuff, but the only time we hear something about, you know, how a university is, unfortunately, most of it is native. And that sucks. Because I think Howard University is one of the most prestigious HBCUs that are out there. And the fact that, you know, most, on average, HBCUs cost more than, you know, I guess you're a white colonist. And the fact that they're going under really makes me wonder who's really touching the books. Because it's really hard to, as a college, when you have a lot of people going there, it's hard for you to go under. St. Paul's found a way, you know, not like you say Paul or anything, but they found a way to do it. But unfortunately, I mean, with Howard and their pedigree, I don't understand how they go under like that. Uh, we're getting a hit on the MixLR uh, Mix page. We got Jay Grizzy uh, of the Green Room version 2.0 with Jay Grizzy and Lisa P. Heard here on these airwaves. Wednesdays from 7 to 9. He says, it sounds like Detroit with certain people in power. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. The people in power at Howard should be ashamed. I 100% uh, 100% agree with that. Ain't no high step on the Marcus Jay. We're going to leave it there. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, you got your main man, Carlton Banks, who's asking the question, what do you think about it? I know what he's going to ask, but you want to stay tuned so that you can hear what he's going to ask. Marcus J, ain't no high stepping. Hang in there with us. We live from the den. We are the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate those people that are with us. Stay tuned. We got a lot more show to go. Yeah. 